patient administrations as staff are the ones that get those dollars and then they come back and ask for more tax dollars. I would like to see more transparency with administrations and I want to see teachers get more money. I come from a family of teachers. Thank you. The question really was about taxes and then we're using the example of the county as the 1A money and which is going to come in, in a couple of years. They're going to borrow money to try to get some projects going now, or at least considering that. Do you think that's a good idea? What kind of projects? Well, there's a whole list of projects that voters approved, from paving roads by schools to improving sections of highway to park. I mean, there's a whole so, long list. So truly, this is an infrastructure investment opportunity. Yes. Okay. So, again, um, I keep going back to chipping my windshield on Highway uh, 50, but it's true. You know, I think it's just a perfect little microcosm of all the things that could be better here in Southern Colorado. Um, so yes, I, I think that's a good idea and I would support such a measure uh, because I want things uh, to get better, including our roads, including our schools. And you know, I, I think uh, that part, a major part of everything that's, that could be better um, is our own lack of long-term thinking. This is going to pay off in economic development, in better schools, in a brighter tomorrow. Thank you. How are you going to pay for it? I believe you just said. Okay. Either of you have any other comments on this topic? <laughs> no? No, I'm good. Okay. Well, we're ready for closing remarks. You may remember that Don won the coin toss and he elected to conclude the event. So, Brianna, you're up. Thank you so much for your attention tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate everyone coming out. Thank you so much again to uh, PCC and to the Chieftain for hosting this debate tonight. You know, I remember, I remember when I first started noticing uh, something was up with my little boy, Noel. Um, he wasn't babbling, he wasn't singing along, eye contact wasn't great, something was wrong. So I went back to school, uh, got a graduate education in special education, uh, so that I could understand my little boy and what was going on with him. I didn't stop for four long years, <laughs> and they were some long ones, until our little boy started talking until our little boy uh, could stay in a general education classroom. After my husband got out of the U.S. Army, we picked Pueblo as home because we wanted a place to raise our little boy, a nice small town, a community that we believed in, that we could call home. I'm proud to call Southern Colorado home. I'm even prouder to call so many of you neighbors, friends, and family. I think that Southern Colorado and House District 47 has a unique, special way of life that is highly underrated here in Colorado, especially when you put it toe to toe to that mess that's going on in Denver. And I want to make sure that we are not left behind. Over the last 18 months, I've had the honor of meeting hundreds, probably thousands, of families uh, who are struggling to get by, who need somebody to be a voice up in Denver, who's going to fight. I'm going to give you guys 102% every single day, all day, every day, um, because I want to know that my family and yours, if we work hard, can get ahead, that our kids can succeed, that when they finish their education, whether it's a four-year university or a technical college, there's a job waiting for them that the water we drink is clean, and that it stays here, not getting sold off to Denver, and that healthcare actually works for us, so that you can seek treatment when you're sick. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you guys tonight. I'm so proud of this campaign and everything we've accomplished already, and I promise to always put families first. Thank you very much. Friends, you've heard us both speak, and you have an important decision to make. I thank the Chieftain for having me here. 
And I thank each of you in the audience and at home for listening and caring. caring. Vote wrong and we end up with leaders who will tax and spend us into more debt and more jobs will be lost. My opponent talks about families first. My opponents had to run against just me in this campaign. I've had to run against a campaign mainly funded by a lot of Washington, D.C. based dark money trying to influence our election in Colorado with the gutter level politics of destruction. Like me, many of you in this room have been involved with the heartbreak of divorce and its ugly aftermath, especially when one parent uses their own children to attack the other parent. I've always been against this, and I always will be against this. Children have a way of blaming themselves no matter what you say. My opponent's out-of-state based smear campaign used quotes from a front page headline story calling me a deadbeat dad and that simply is not true. Deadbeats run and hide. I never hid from anybody. Forty years ago, I got behind in child support. The reason doesn't matter. I don't believe in excuses. I apologized for it. I owned it. And I paid back every single penny of it, plus interest. <laughs> That's old news. My opponent used it, and, or I mean my ex-wife used it and her political power in North Carolina to turn my kids against me when I had been a loving, caring, involved father. I was their Sunday school teacher. I couldn't flee from North Carolina with a warrant after me. I wasn't even in North Carolina. We lived in Ohio. We got divorced in Ohio. And as a courtesy to my ex-wife, I let her file in North Carolina. Big mistake on my part. She, took, she left Ohio while I was in California on a business trip and took all my money, my kids, my furniture, my good car, even my clothing. And she went to North Carolina so she could be with mom. Her dad had been mayor for years and the judge that handled the case in North Carolina was a childhood friend of her dad. Bree, you mailed out an ageist fundraising letter ridiculing me for being 71 years old, ridiculing my profession, and for teaching senior citizens much needed self-defense. You also ridiculed Native American clothing I was wearing from a personal photo that wasn't even a campaign photo. It was a picture of my wife and me out on a date. I revere people of all races and ages, even if you don't. Three of my beautiful granddaughters, as I mentioned, are seated in the front row. Day before yesterday, Lolo, my seven-year-old granddaughter there, got the mail and there were some of my opponents' dirty, disgusting flyers, dirty trick flyers, from her friends in D.C. and the mail it made her cry. And my son, his ex-wife, and his current wife had to explain to her that there are bad people that will gossip and lie just to get elected. Bree, apparently families first only applies to some families, not mine and certainly not the elderly. You should be ashamed of yourself and I feel you owe me an apology for the dirty tactics you've employed in this campaign instead of simply running on positive solutions to problems. I'm going to Denver to fight for everybody and I will address all of our challenges. My name's Don Bendell, the candidate with the real world experience, education, background, and wisdom to best <laughs> represent you in Denver and improve your quality of life. My friends, please okay. vote for me. Thank you. set up for the county commissioner debate. I'm sure I'd like you to stay for that. Be careful tonight. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you, Green. Thank you.